I'd like to welcome a very close friend and very dear brother, Pastor Mark Daniel, pastor of Focal Point Church in Orlando, Florida. And we have the privilege of traveling to nations to carry a message of awakening and transforming a revival and leadership development. And so please welcome him as he comes and shares a little bit from his heart. Welcome, Pastor Mark. Thank you. It's an honor to be here on this very special day before the election that we have in the United States. And I come here speaking today not as a man or as a white person or as a Republican or a Democrat. I come speaking here today as a believer in Jesus Christ. He's changed my life. He's changed my view of the world. He's changed and brought me into his family, adopted me, and made me his own. And through all of that, he's helped give purpose and meaning and even why I'm here on this earth. And when I come here to 2020 and I look at all that we've gone through, this is not a normal year. This is not a year to keep the status quo. This is a year of change. This is a year for us to be humbled and to be aware and to begin to seek the Lord with all of our heart. And when I read the Bible again and again, you see God allowed disruptions to come in people's lives to stop them from where they were going so they would turn back to where he's calling them. He allowed disruptions for a time of humbling there's times that you don't even realize how you've drifted from God until you've been humbled. You don't even realize why the problems that you're facing are there until you stop and you begin to look around. We look at 2020, it's not been one problem, two problems, three problems, four problems. It's been a continuation. And not only in society, but even we personally have felt them. We've gone through things personally. I've heard so many people say, I don't know how much more I can take. What they're saying is everything is shaking and I'm running out of my human strength. I need a strength greater than myself to stand at such a time as this. A heavenly alarm has sounded and it is continuing to sound. It's not just been for a moment like we felt in 9-11 when we felt that but we moved past it. This alarm has continued to go and the alarm is to awaken us. The time is now, it's not later, it's not to put off. And one of the things that have sounded in me is that I think the church has abdicated our hope to a politician or to someone else, and we're re needing to return to say our hope is Jesus Christ. Our hope is for the body of Christ to begin to really return to him, to really stand in the power of his Holy Spirit, to come back together and realize black and white, this camp, that denomination, we need the Lord, and that are the fabric of this nation is tearing and that the only one that can heal it is the Lord. And we can't be casual with that. And we can't be halfway. The Bible talks about, as my dear pastor was sharing about in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 and all these places, he says, you're going to see the earth shake. You're going to see climate events that are happening. You're going to see people groups rise against people groups. You're going to see these things. You're not to be afraid. You're to treat them as birth pangs. You're to treat them as an urgency that begins to come upon you. And when we see what 2020 has, we should not be trying to get back to normal. We should be crying out for an urgency, a hunger, for a humbling to come upon us. And that we as the church don't want to be the same, but that we want the Lord to come. When you read the Bible and you look at when shakings happen, God's answer for that is always the same. He talks about when you see this happening, when you see that happening, when you see this pestilence, when you see the locust, when you see the famine, when you see the, if my people, it's not the politicians, it's not the media, it's not the billionaires, it's if my people, if my people, well, because they're the ones that I've placed in that time in history to respond. They're the ones that have my heart, that have my spirit dwelling within them. They're the ones that need to begin to cry out and all through the Bible, you see this in the book of Joel, they have famine, they have uh, economic crisis. And God tells them, if you'll return to the Lord, I'll come back to you. In Nehemiah, when the walls are down and the, the business world has collapsed and all this is going on, he says in Nehemiah 1, he said, if you'll return to me and obey my commands and live by them, I'll bring you back. Over and over, return to me and I'll deliver you. Return to me and I'll protect you. Return to me and I will come and move and heal and transform the land. It reminds me in Ezekiel 22, a passage that some of you may know where 
God describes in the land. He said, this is going on with your politicians. This is going on with your business leaders. This is going on in your families. This is going on in the house of God where the priests are saying this. They're calling unclean clean. They're taking the holy things and making them common. And he's saying, I'm looking for somebody who will stand before me on behalf of the land to rebuild the wall. And I've thought about what wall is he talking about? It's not a physical wall. He's talking about a spiritual wall that has come down. There's a spiritual wall where we've departed from his word. We've departed from his ways in the family, in the society, in the church, in the life of the land. And he said, I'm looking for people. You see the walls have come down. And in 2020, have you ever felt like more than ever, the walls are coming down all around us? And there is not one person that can go rebuild those walls. He's looking to the people of God. He's saying, who will stand before me on behalf of the land? And I think about that. We're saying, God, come heal our land. But he's saying, I'm looking for you to respond, my people. I'm looking for you to say, God, what can we do to rebuild the wall in our hearts, in our home, in our churches? What can we do? It leads me to the last thought that I've, I've been really pondering during this time. It's about when Jesus in Luke 19, remember, he's coming to the end of his life. He knows he's going to lay it down. And remember, God has sent the, John the Baptist to come to prepare the way. Jesus had done all the miracles. Jesus had done all the things. And he's getting ready to leave. And he goes over Jerusalem, and he weeps over the city. Because why? They missed their time of visitation. And I was just praying during this month after month after month after month don't let us miss our time of visitation God don't let us miss what you're doing right now don't let us and I tell you I've had to fight to keep my eyes on the Lord because of all the angst that's out there in society it can in provoke you all the political discourse can draw you this way or that way all the the, the, the exaggeration that goes on, all the injustice in multitudes of ways that you see. You can want to go and begin to take your eyes off the Lord, but I keep coming back to the place. This is a time to seek the Lord. This is a time to humble ourselves before God. Those that have ears to hear, hear. Those that have eyes to see, see. This is not a time we're looking for a human solution. This is a time when the church of Jesus Christ, black and white, Hispanic, denomination after denomination are coming and bowing our knee before the Lord and saying, God, don't pass us by. But we feel and hear that you are speaking to us and you are shouting to us and you're calling upon us. You gave us your heart and we're crying out. The land is being torn. And we, the people of God, know that you are the source of our salvation. And so we're arising and wakening for such a time as this. So when we come to this time of prayer, and we come into this time of calling upon him, let this heart of humility and crying out grow in us. God bless you.